Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this year's virtual graduation ceremony to celebrate our 2020 Master of Science in Global Health Delivery graduating class. My name is Enoch Guamuza. I'm a lecturer at the University of Global Health Equity, and I will be your Master of Ceremony for this special occasion. I would like to start by recognizing dignitaries and special guests that we are honored to have with us today. Our guest of honor, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Valentin Wamaria, Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Ngamije, Professor Senait Fiseha, our keynote speaker, uh, Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Paul Farmer, Vice Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Agnes Winaguao, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics and Research Affairs, and the Dean of the School of Medicine at UGHE, Professor Abebe Bekele, Deputy Vice Chancellor Administrative and Financial Affairs, Mr. Rogers Muradije, Governor of the Northern Province, Dignitaries of Brera District, faculty and staff of the University of Global Health Equity, distinguished guests, graduates, parents, family and friends of UGHE. It is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to the fourth degree granting ceremony of the University of Global Health Equity's Master of Science in Global Health Delivery. Today's ceremony will include the following key messages. Opening remarks from the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics and Research Affairs and the Dean of the School of Medicine, Professor Abebe Bekele. Welcome address from the Vice Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Agnes Winaguaho. Remarks from our keynote speaker, Professor Senait Fiseha. Remarks from Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Wamaria Valentin. Uh, remarks from Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Ngamije. Speech from our student representative, uh, Gloria Ijihozo. Remarks from the Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Paul Farmer. And remarks from our guest of honor, the, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. I also want to mention that this entire graduation ceremony will be recorded and will be uploaded to the UGHE's YouTube channel uh, for those who want to view it later. May I now call upon to the De Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academics and Research Affairs and the Founding Dean of the School of Medicine, Professor Abebe Bekele, for his opening remarks and to introduce the Vice Chancellor. Distinguished guest of honor, the Chancellor and the Vice Chancellor of UGHE, the entire UGHE community, students, faculty, staff, dear graduates. My name is Abebe. I am the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academic and Research Affairs and Dean of the School of Medicine. I'm here today to convey my few words of congratulations to the graduating class of the year 2020. Dear graduates, so here you are. All those sleepless nights studying, all the difficult exams, but here you are. I'm incredibly proud of each and every one of you. However, first and foremost, thank your families. They've stood by you, they've supported you, and today they share your joy, excitement, and pride. Thank your professors, the faculty and staff who put so much time and effort into teaching you, guiding you, inspiring you, poking you, and sometimes reprimanding you. And thank each other too, because you never would have reached this incredible day without the friendship, support, and collaboration of your friends. You came of age under the shadow of a different series of events in the world and in your countries the uncontrolled COVID epidemic, myriads of natural calamities and raging wars, 
a widening gap between the rich and poor, uncertainty, newly emerging biological threats, you name it. And only God knows what tomorrow will throw in your faces. I really hope you will take advantage of these challenging times to strengthen your moral compass by directing your energies and talents to doing good. That you will combine the knowledge and skill you have gained to speak for those in need or underserved and to advance science in the services of humanity. But all that is for tomorrow, is about tomorrow. Today, it's about you, your joy, your pride, your achievements, and your well-deserved celebration. I offer you all my best wishes and sincere words of congratulations for all your success and happiness. May I now invite the Vice Chancellor of UGHE, Professor Agnes Pinaguaho, to deliver the opening remarks. I thank you very much. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Valentin Uamaria, Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Ngamije, Professor Senat Fiseha, our keynote speaker, Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Paul Farmer, Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of Academic and Research Affairs, and Dean of the School of Medicine, Professor Abebe Bekele, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Administrative and Financial Affairs, Mr. Rogers Muragije, Governor of the North Province, Leaders of Burera District, UJG Board of Directors, Faculty, Financial and Administrative Members of the University of Global Health Equity, Dear students, family, friends, and supporters of UJG, and last but not least, dear lions and lioness of the class of MGHD 2020. Today is a wonderful day, even though I am saddened to be separated from you by thousands of hills, with some of us in Butaro and others in Kigali. However, we are together in joy and in spirit. Nobody could have predicted when you started your journey at UJG a year ago that we would be living through an unprecedented global health crisis coupled with a huge economic crisis. The COVID pandemic has revealed long-standing socioeconomic issues inadequate coverage of health services and disparities in access to health care. This has brought fear and distress around the world, especially among the vulnerable, because they face an increase in poverty and a decrease in access to essential services, include health during this uncertain time, we must contribute not only to support and to reassure those left out, but beyond that, we need to contribute to systemic change and improve their lives. Dear graduate, it is to learn to support solutions to situations just like this that you came here to UJG. You have learned to advocate and to promote inclusive and lasting systemic change that are aligned to UJG vision and mission of improving the lives of the most in need. You have learned to look at health through historical, anthropological, social, economic, and environmental lens in order to fully understand the social determinant of health and the myriad of factors that determine the health of an individual or a community. You have learned to use your voice to advocate for policy change and to create and improve health service delivery that promotes human development. You are now equipped to think with the needed compassion to act as social justice fighters and to smoothly but firmly advance positive change that improve the lives of the most vulnerable. 
you have also learned leadership skills so that you can lead intervention and create alliance, leveraging teamwork with everyone from civil society as well as from private sector and public sector to create a better world for all. And today, more than ever, your skills will be needed. The current pandemic has shown us the importance of innovation and collaboration, as well as the necessity of approaching global health challenges through biosocial analysis and the lens of equity. At UGAG, together with you, we have taken on our chair of the fight against COVID-19, and you have witnesses how we can turn a threat into an advantage. During this crisis that has stopped a wide range of human activities, you have participated in UJG efforts to continue to provide quality education and innovation, discovering together rapidly with flexibility new methodology to learn and teach. With your agreement, graduates, and the agreement of parents, students, faculty and staff, we have ensured that our UJG family fulfilled our commitment to support you in completing the education that brought you to the heart of Butaro. Moreover, our UJG family continues to fulfill our mission to improve healthcare delivery around the world by amplifying our teaching coverage with new courses responding to the global needs, for example, and among others, by hosting six quality webinars and also through the innovative pandemic preparedness and response courses run by UJG and Partner in Health in July this year. This course that show over 2,000 participants from all over the world is an example of our continued commitment to provide quality health education and to create skilled global health leaders. It provides not only essential information on how a pandemic like COVID-19 should be tackled now and in the future, but it was also an opportunity to bring together educators, implementers, policymakers, physicians, researchers and leaders to discuss their experience, their successes, their challenges and opportunity, and also to network. Secondly, even true, we were unable to travel because of the grounding of airlines, we actively continue our global advocacy with an emphasis for the need to tackle the epidemic through the lens of equity. We increase our contribution to global discussion through international and national media outlets and many more advocacy actions. We have challenged the statu quo by continuing to advance the agenda of global health equity more than ever. For example, by publishing 14 op-eds, 26 peer-reviewed articles, and 36 web articles within a few weeks of the lockdown. You took a fabulous role in that movement, dear graduates, using your keyboards and of your laptop to advance scientific knowledge in global health. You have learned to never give up on the agenda of social justice, even during a global crisis such as this one. I am congratulating you, the MGHD classes 2020, for your achievement and for your remarkable journey and what you have achieved and completed. I also want to congratulate the teacher who have accompanied you on this journey to acquire the knowledge and the skills that the world truly needs more than ever and that you possess. Dear graduates, I congratulate you and I also congratulate your family and your close friends 
who have supported you because I know this year was not an easy year. Because especially the last five months, you were all living in lockdown at Butaro campus. I'm proud of you and I'm sure that you are ready to be the smooth yet effective agent of change that the world needs now more than ever. You are from three continents and 12 countries, Ethiopia, DRC, India, Kenya, Malawi, Nigeria, Pakistan, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Uganda, UK, and US. And I have no doubt that you are the agent of social progress and the living proof that UJG is on its way to achieve its mission to radically transform global health education and healthcare delivery around the world. Implementation of what you have learned and what you have started to implement in our community in Butaro will be your mission. But never forget that advancing the agenda of global health for equitable quality care for all is a heavy task. It requires the cultivation of a network, take advantage of each other, continue to work together, to work with us and with the larger community of lions, wherever you may work, whatever you end up doing. It is only when we work together that we are able to make quick change and the world a better place. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable Minister of Education, Honorable Minister of Health, leaders of Rwanda and the world, board members of UJG, friends, join me in congratulating our graduate of the MGHG class 2020, who are now joining an impressive wide network of change makers and leaders who promote equity, integrity, and social justice. This makes us optimistic for the future of the world. I am very proud and very hopeful. Congratulations, class of MGHG. 2020. And now, dear lion and lionesses, honorable ministers and distinguished guests, I'm honored to introduce this afternoon keynote speaker, Professor Senat Fiseha, an outstanding global leader, a dear friend, and board member of UJG. Professor Senat Fiseha is a globally recognized leader in reproductive health and rights and a long life gender champion. She currently serves as the director of global program at the Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation, as well as chief advisor to the director general of the World Health Organization. A reproductive endo endocrinology specialist prior to this role, Dr. Senat was the, ch the chief of division of Reproductive Endocrinology and Infertility at the University of Michigan, Medical Director of University of Medical Center for Reproductive Medicine, and Founding Executive Director of the Center of International Reproductive Health Training. While at Michigan, she also co-directed the Medical School of Path of Excellence in Global Health and Disparity. As leader of the UM Ethiopian Collaborative Platform for Global Health, she helped Michigan forge strong partnership with Ethiopia Ministry of Health and St. Paul Hospital Millennium Medical College in Addis Ababa. Professor Senat was born in Ethiopia and had an undergraduate degree from Rosary College in River Forest, Illinois. 
MD and GD degree from Southern Illinois University and a certificate in international human rights and comparative law from the University of Oxford. She received numerous awards, including the Ethiopian Ministry of Health's highest award, the University of Michigan Bicentennial Alumni Award, and the 2019 Distinguished Alumni Award from Southern Illinois University School of Medicine. She was also named as one of the 100 most influential Africans for 2018 by the New African Magazine and one of the 100 most influential people in gender policy in 2019. Please join me in giving Professor Senat a warm welcome. Thank you, Dr. Agnes. It's a true honor to be here speaking with the next generations of change makers in global health. Congratulations to all of you on your remarkable achievements. When each of you first learned that you would be part of the class of 2020, I am certain that none of you pictured a graduation ceremony or a graduation year quite like this. We are in the midst of a global pandemic of unprecedented proportions. While the government of Rwanda has been an absolute leader in addressing it, the rest of the world continues to struggle. We see very clearly how this is disproportionately impacting those that are most vulnerable, including women and girls. Any new hardship only amplifies underlying persistent hardship. This is why we need health equity. Amidst this overwhelming hardship, Dr. Tedros, Director General of the World Health Organization, continues to remind us to keep, at this time, of simple but profound values such as solidarity, love, integrity, equity, and justice. I am sure these values may resonate deeply for each of you. They are part of why you probably are here. You are here because you believe that health is a human right, but you know it is still out of, out of reach for too many. You know that it is unacceptable and you are committed to change it. Not only are we living through a global pandemic, but also a greater revolution of sorts, a series of upheavals that has forced us to take a much harder look at the institutions and systems around us and also demand so much better. You have chosen to champion social justice, prioritize the needs of the underserved communities, and transform health systems to deliver quality care to all. I can honestly say within my lifetime, I cannot think of moments of greater opportunity, responsibility, and urgency for those who represent the future of the global health field. To that end, I want to emphasize three things as you walk through this virtual doors into your next endeavor. First, the vast majority of today's biggest global health challenges stem from a shared obstacle, a dramatic imbalance of power. Make it your mission to decisively disrupt that status quo. Whether you are going to be a researcher, a government employee, a community organizer, a business leader, you each will have a critical role to play in examining and exposing the power structure at play in your own communities. Most importantly, we must shift that power to people within and fighting for the communities most in need. Never stop noticing who is not in the room. We need more women in decision-making roles, especially in a field where women make up about 70% of the global health workforce. We need to elevate voices and expertise 
from our continent, but generally from the global south as a whole. We need to meaningfully engage young people, members of vulnerable and marginalized communities, and that every voice that has been systematically excluded. This is key to shaping a just and bright future for everyone. Secondly, I want you to remember that you are not alone in this fight. You are part of a critical and growing network of young leaders around the world, ready to take on our biggest challenges. Lean into your networks and communities. They are going to be perhaps your greatest asset the University of Global Health Equity is the first institution of its kind. So you are graduating not just with an education, but with a global community that will help all of you towards your goal to advance a better world. Your diversity is your power. Just looking around the room, it's incredible to see that a class of 27 graduating from 12 countries, Rwanda, United Kingdom, Nigeria, Uganda, India, Pakistan, Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, Malawi, Kenya, the United States of America, and the Congo. And I love to see that more than half of you are women. This community doesn't end with your graduation, but rather it begins here. Second, never doubt that you have the tools to succeed. You will face roadblocks, obstacles, times of doubts. People will push back and tell you that change is not possible. Do not believe them for a moment. During your time at UGHE, you have gained a wealth of skills and access that will allow you to reimagine our global health systems in Africa and beyond and turn that vision into a reality. In today's world, memorizing static information is far less important than honing how to understand complex, interconnected, and ever-evolving systems, and how to bring others along with us. The journey will not always be easy. Much of what makes like common sense to you is still considered radical by many who are established in this global health space. This is your power. Always remember your unique voice and point of view. Own your vision and your leadership. You are what we have been waiting for. Transforming systems, achieving justice, taking your seat at the table and making an impact, this will mean getting comfortable making others uncomfortable and fighting relentlessly for what is right. Do not lose heart or hope. This is your moment. To the 2020 graduating class of the University of Global Health Equity, my warmest congratulations on achieving your Master's of Science in Global Health Delivery. And congratulations to those who supported you along your journey, your families, your friends, and your communities. Together, I look forward to working with you towards justice and equity and health for all. Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce the Honorable Minister of Health. I have already said that we are incredibly honored that His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, has blessed this graduation and that two ministers are with us to celebrate our graduating lions. I'm very grateful to take this opportunity to introduce the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Ngamije. Dr. Daniel Ngamije is a Rwandan and he served as Minister of Health since February 2020. Prior to this role, in June 2018, he joined WHO country office as a national program officer and his duty, among others, were to provide technical assistance to the Ministry of Health and the development of malaria and NTDs, policies, strategies, guidelines, standards, and norms, supporting 
and assisting to define programs implementation modalities and providing assistance to conduct programs review and resource mobilization. In February 2007 to June 2017, he served as the coordinator of the project implementation unit, which later converted into the single project implementation unit of the Ministry of Health, where he coordinated and supported the process of fund mobilization and grant negotiation with partners, such as the Global Fund and the World Bank, and bilateral Ministry of Health partners like the USA, UK, and Belgium, among others. He also successfully coordinated the implementation of those project components. Prior to the above as well, Dr. Daniel Ngamije held various positions at the Ministry of Health that include serving as coordinator of the Malaria National Program, regional director in charge of health and social affairs in former Gitarama province, where he oversees the planning and budgeting process for all health facilities across the province. Prior to being in managerial position, Minister Daniel served as medical director at Kapgai Hospital from 1995 to 97. Dr. Gamije has completed his bachelor degree in medicine and surgery at University of Kinshasa, DRC, and a master of medicine in public health from the University Libre de Bruxelles in Belgium. Please join me in giving Honorable Minister Daniel a warm welcome. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Valentino Maria, Advisor to the Director General, WHO, Professor Senait Fiseha, UGH Chancellor, Professor Paul Farmer, UGH Vice Chancellor, Professor Agnes Pinaguaho, UGH Deputy Vice Chancellors, UGH Faculty, UGH Class of 2020, Family and Friends. It is my pleasure to join you this afternoon for UGH graduation ceremony. The University of Global Health Equity is training the next generation of global health leaders who are equipped to strengthen the health system so that quality, evidence-driven care is provided at all levels of the health system. UGH graduates from the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery complete with skills and strategy to deal with the most pressing challenges the health sector is facing through an equity approach in Rwanda and beyond. With the current COVID-19 situation, there is a need to ensure that health professionals are trained in global health delivery through an equity approach so that they are equipped to develop, manage and adapt health sectors and systems that respond to the current urgent needs and issues and those of the future with priority to most vulnerable people in order to ensure universal health coverage and access. UGHE has a strong commitment to contribute to the development of Rwanda health system and its capacity to respond to the most pressing global health problem. As more health crises appear, from pandemic to malnutrition, non-communicable diseases or neglected tropical diseases, it is crucial to have a workforce well equipped to deal with these challenges in a more human, centered and holistic approach. The Master of Science in Global Health Delivery is an innovative program that trains health professionals in practical skills to be able to solve these critical issues like COVID-19 and others. More importantly, through UGH students are taught to look at this issue with equity in mind. That means focusing on health delivery for people and places who might be, general, might be marginalized geographically, socially, or economically isolated in order to both improve health outcome 
and quality of life. As we continue to strengthen our health system, and as we innovate and use new technologies and sciences, we must ensure that our future workforce prioritize equity, inclusion, and accessibility in their daily practice of delivery health to those in need. As graduates from diverse backgrounds, linked by dedication to provide equitable, quality, and accessible health innovation to most vulnerable, I commend you on the achievement of a Master of Science in Global Health Delivery. You demonstrated resilience, creativity, passion, and dedication to complete this degree. These are vital quality you should use as you became advocates and activists for equity in healthcare. I wish to congratulate you all and wish you success in your future endeavor. Thank you very much. And thanks to the entire leadership and teachers of UGHE. Thank you so much. We have been incredibly honored to have such special guests with us to celebrate our graduating lions. Thank you to everyone present. We are grateful for the support the government of Rwanda gives to UJG. This year, we are blessed by the presence of His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, who will share his wisdom with us later. And now, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce the Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Valentin Uamaria. Dr. Valentin Uamaria is the Minister of Education in Rwanda since end of February 2020. Before joining the ministry, she was the Deputy Vice-Chancellor in charge of training, institutional development and research at Rwanda Polytechnic. She was responsible for providing science and technology-based technical and vocational training, which enabled the beneficiaries to create jobs for personal development. She is passionate and promotes research and technology and disseminates their finding to foster national development. Dr. Valentin holds a Bachelor in Science in Chemistry from former National University of Rwanda. In 2005, she got a Master's Degree in Chemistry from Witwatersrand Run University in Johannesburg, South Africa. In 2013, she obtained a, her PhD from UNESCO, IHE, and Delft University of Technology in Netherlands in Environmental Engineering and Water Technology. Dr. Valentin has been involved in teaching research for 19 years at the University of Rwanda and served as Dean of the School of Science at the College of Science and Technology at the University of Rwanda. Beside her senior lecture and research at University of Rwanda, Honorable Minister Valentin has held other important responsibilities in Rwanda society and sat at board of local companies. She has also been a member of local and international organization. Please join me in giving Honorable Minister Valentin a warm welcome. I'm very pleased to be given the opportunity to make this statement at yet another milestone in the progress of the University of Global Health Equity, the graduation of a further 28 students from 12 different countries, including Rwanda, UK, Nigeria, Uganda, India, Pakistan, Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, Malawi, Kenya, USA, and DRC. The Rwanda Vision 2050 is about ensuring high standards of living for all Rwandans focusing on areas such as quality of life, 
modern infrastructure and livelihoods, and transformation for prosperity. The University of Global Health Equity is supporting this vision by training the next generation of global health leaders using innovative educational approaches and going beyond the traditional classrooms and lecturer-based education model to teach directly in the settings where a student or graduate will work. UGHE is not only committed to building the capacity of the health sector in Rwanda, but it is also bringing new ideas to the education sector in order to train competent, high quality health professionals and health educators in Rwanda, the region and further afield. I note that UGHE is creating strong quality health systems through which health professionals are trained. UGHE's educational programs are unique, integrating the community into all aspects of the curriculum and ensuring that the core skills such as leadership, management and communication are taught throughout all programs. For example, the graduates of the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery have taken courses in leadership and management where they have learned about man project management and organizational leadership in global health. They have participated in deep field visit into the community and they have undertaken research project in the community in order to help find solutions to the pressing challenges the community may be facing. The Minister of Education recognizes the importance of the new innovative educational approaches being undertaken by UGHE, which are essential as the higher education landscape prioritizes creating a strong workforce ready to take on the next challenges that Rwanda, the region and the world may face. The education system has seen a huge shift in the past five months. COVID-19 pandemic has meant that all education has had to be delivered online, and this has presented many challenges for the education sector. It is vital that higher education institutions continue to innovate and find creative solutions to these challenges. By keeping classes ongoing throughout this period, and continuing to provide quality education, UGHE is demonstrating their commitment to this. Even though classes are delivered online, the students are still active in their learning. They are being exposed to the importance of flexibility and critical thinking when faced with uncertainty and a change in the status quo. They are succeeding in their academic journey, even though they have been such significant changes in that journey. As Rwanda strives to provide high quality ed tertiary education that is on par with global leadership in education, the Ministry of Education and UGHE are proud to work side by side and work together to develop new innovative ways of teaching health professionals in Rwanda. UGHE is demonstrating the importance of innovative educational approaches to create outstanding global health leaders and professionals, even when faced with uncertain times like the situation we are currently experiencing. The approaches that UGHE uses is helping to ensure that Rwanda and higher education opportunities are among the best in the world. Once again, I thank you for the opportunity to make these brief remarks. My warmest congratulations go to today's graduates of the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery 
particularly as you have embraced the challenge you have faced over the five months with the, your education shifting to an online environment. Your flexibility, dedication and hard work have paid off and I hope that you can apply those skills as you take your next steps in your careers. Thank you. Your Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Valentin Kuwamaria, Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Gamije, Professor Senate Fisia, our keynote speaker, Professor Paul Farmer, the Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Agnes Minaguaho, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Habib Bekere, the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of Academic and Research Affairs and the Dean of the Medical School, University of Global Health Equity, the Governor of the Northern Province, UGHE staff, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks, Honorable Ministers, for your inspiring addresses. I'm Rogers Mrajije, UGHE's Deputy Vice Chancellor administrative and financial affairs. I'm delighted to present the next section of the UGHE's graduation, which will give the floor to our esteemed UGHE students, who are the reason we are all here today. The video that you are about to see reflects a range of experiences within UGHE's unparalleled learning opportunities, as the students share something they have learned for the very first time this year. We hope you enjoy watching. My first time visiting indigenous communities taught me the importance of community activism. The first time of learning about managing healthcare delivery inspired me to seek new ways to improve healthcare for the vulnerable. My first visit to marginalized communities taught me that access to healthcare services should be a human right. My first observation of our class composition was diversity. My first impression of the Putaro campus is serenity. The first time I learned about the incredible overlap between human health, agriculture and the environment. My first time learning about structure virus taught me that we need to fight its associated inequities. Visiting the community around the Obutaro campus taught me the importance of integrating theory and practice in order to be an impactful global health leader. My first time to hear that all health treatment approaches are not by medical. Socioeconomic barriers should be addressed too. My first class at UJT gave me hope that the underprivileged also can access health. My first time in the community, I realized it's important to incorporate the voice of the people in the delivery of global health projects. My first time being in the same class with over 11 different cultures told me cultural humility. My first time to learn about One Health, I realized that a synergy is needed to succeed in global health arena. My first time learning about pseudoconiosis taught me that there's an urgent call to fight against neglected tropical diseases. My first time at UGHE uh, learning how to fight against the pathologies of power in healthcare. My first outreach visit at UGHE inspired me to foster community-led initiatives. My first time doing a Muganda highlighted the importance of community. My first time meeting indigenous people in Rwanda reminded me of the need for health system research on indigenous people. My first time attending an International Women Leaders in Global Health Conference. My first time working in the talk with Dr. Akiki, I learned that I have to take care about improving the conditions that affect others' lives. My first time being taught by African professors taught me the importance of representation in academics. My first research at UGHC empowered me to lead evidence-based interventions and policies. My first time learning how human, animal, and environmental health are inseparable. Hashtag One Health. I would like to introduce Gloria Ijihozo as this year's MGHD20 student representative. In 2019, 
Gloria was the chosen winner of the Moscovitz Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to one incoming female student every year who has demonstrated a commitment to equity, has a strong desire to advance global health delivery, and who performed exceptionally well on all stages of the admissions process. Today, she represents a court of 28 scholar activists from 12 countries around the world who will themselves serve to be advocates for UGHE's equity agenda. Please join me in welcoming Gloria. His Excellency, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Valentin Uamaria, Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Gamije, Professor Sanai Fisteha, our keynote speaker, Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Paul Farmer, Vice Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, Professor Agnes Winagwaho, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics and Research Affairs, and the Dean of School of Medicine, Professor Abebe Bekele, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Administrative and Financial Affairs, Mr. Rogers Muradije, Governor of the Northern Province, Mr. Gatalazi Jean Marie Vianney, Dignitaries of Ureda District, UJHE Board of Directors, Faculty and Staff of the University of Global Health Equity, Distinguished Guests, Graduates, Parents, Family and Friends of the University of Global Health Equity. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I wanna begin this speech by saying this to the class of 2020. Congratulations for completing your master's degree in the midst of a pandemic. Or instead of saying congratulations, I guess I should say congratulations, you did it. But on a more serious note, our cohort represents over 12 different cultures. For many of us, myself included, this is the first time we have been in a classroom this diverse. And the beauty of this is that it has taught me a lot more than I could have ever learned in any classroom. And one of the most important lessons I have learned this year is that it will take us forever to vote on anything. But on a more serious note, the diverse perspectives each of you contributed to discussions in the classroom and conversations outside of the classroom have challenged me to see the world from different lenses. Your ability to tie personal experiences to global health scenarios has enabled me to make sense of concepts that seemed abstract in this field. Each one of you, in your own unique way, has taught me a valuable lesson about life and about global health. The world of global health that we are about to delve into as we have experienced this past year requires individuals who are willing to unlearn as much as they're willing to learn. It dares us to learn to be critical of existing healthcare systems and to offer sustainable solutions to the most pressing problems in global health. It also forces us to unlearn preconceived notions and come to face to face with our own misconceptions. As such, I want to encourage you to walk into this field as a child. I know this analogy sounds a bit misplaced, but allow me to expound on it. When children begin the stage of cognitive development, they use all the resources available to them to learn about the world. They do this through observing, listening, experimenting, exploring, and my favorite, asking questions. Children are never afraid to change their minds. They're the most vocal human beings you can think of, and they don't discriminate. Well, not always. In brief, they combine all the concepts we have learned this past year to make sense of the world around them and everything in it. And so as global health leaders, adopting the spirit of a child will allow us to be lifelong learners, to make wiser and more informed decisions, and to embrace change however uncomfortable it may be. Tapping into the curiosity of a child within us will enable us to remain honest, humble, inquisitive, vocal, and inclusive. Global health is a puzzle made of individuals with unique experiences, thoughts, and personalities. To understand and see the bigger picture of global health, you need to fit these individual pieces together. As you walk from UGHE into this world, remember that we are part of a bigger movement. 
a historic movement to make quality healthcare accessible to all individuals, regardless of their race, ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status, or sexual orientation. Earlier in this program, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Agnes Minagaho, delivered a powerful lecture on health as a human right. Now I call on you to take these tools and walk into this world, challenging the world to see health as a basic right for everyone and not a luxury that can only be accessed by the affluent members of society. UGHE has given us the tools we need to advance this movement to the next level. It is now up to us to change systems that promote or maintain health injustices, make policies that favor the marginalized and the poor, create organizations that serve communities that have often been overlooked, and lead movements that will change how health services are delivered to the impoverished. My charge to you, class of 2020, is to remain open to the invaluable lessons that the communities around us have to teach us and to be willing to admit that we do not know everything. I call on you to constantly reflect on your role in the bigger movement of global health and what you can do to amplify the voices of the communities that have historically lived within the margins of society. I cannot wait to see each one of you change the face of global health. Before I conclude, I wanna take this opportunity to thank the amazing faculty and staff members of UGHE that have contributed to our learning and growth. To Dr. Rex, Dr. Zahira, Dr. Phaedra, Dr. Yana, Dr. Emily, Dr. Akiki, Chloe, Diodonet, and Enoch, and everyone who has taught us this year, we thank you for your patience and your commitment to molding the next generation of global health leaders. To Haguruka staff, La Payot staff, and the gardening team, we thank you for always putting a smile on our faces and taking good care of us. To our MBBS siblings, we are grateful for how you have made our experience at UGHE one to remember, and we cannot wait to celebrate you when you complete your medical education. Lastly, to our family and friends who are hopefully watching this online, thank you for your support and encouragement throughout this journey. We hope we have made you proud. Class of 2020, I wanna end this by thanking each one of you. Thank you for sharing your beautiful cultures with me, for teaching me about healthcare in your respective countries, and for sharing your passions and your dreams for a just and equal world for all. Your friendship, your encouragement, and your humor have all added a splash of color to the mosaic of my journey in global health. No matter where we go after this, we will continue to be a family, a little imperfect, but always ready to serve the underserved in our communities. Wherever the world takes you, class of 2020, remember that you will forever be a lion. Now go out there and do your best. Thank you. His Excellency, the President of Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. Honorable Ministers, all protocols observed. We have 28 prospective graduates of the class of 2020, Master of Science in Global Health Delivery. Their graduation has been approved by the Academic Council, Academic Commission, and the Senate of the University of Global Health Equity. Before we begin the conferring of the degrees, I would invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Agnes Bingabahu, to lead our pledge. Would the candidates for the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery, Class of 2020, please rise. Class of MGHD 2020, the UGHD Graduate Declaration is a commitment to the highest standard of professionalism and ethical practice in your career as taught during your study at UJG. It is a promise and a commitment that you as graduate of the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery will abide by the University of Global Health mission and vision and values. We ask you, all MGHD graduates, to make this declaration publicly and enthusiastically in the presence of faculty, fellow graduates, families, and friends. 
Class of 2020, please repeat this pledge after me. I will be a global health professional who leads with intentionally dignity and integrity. I will be a global health professional who leads with intentionality, dignity and integrity. I understand my responsibility and hold myself accountable to use this learning to contribute to the field of global health, especially to disadvantaged population. I understand my responsibility and hold myself accountable to use this learning to contribute to the field of global health, especially to disadvantaged populations. I will maintain the utmost respect and compassion for human life, human rights, and human dignity. I will maintain the utmost respect and compassion for human rights, human rights, and human dignity. I will deliver my services with equity and excellence. I will, I will deliver my services with equity and excellence. I will promote and practice lifelong learning and research in global health. I will promote and practice lifelong learning and research in global health. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. So help me God. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. So help me God. Congratulations. I have the honor to present to you these candidates who have fulfilled the requirement of the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery Program. Students, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Global Health Delivery. These are the names of our graduates. Orietta Agasaro. Kurum Arif. Daniel Solomon Bangura. Lisa Bergwa. Saddam Bukuru Susina Halimeriam Dasselin Agassi Fisum Gabrizalasi Jesse Uchindami Gondwe Gloria Idzihozo Jolly Josiah Kenan, Shauna McKinnon, Sandeep Mede, Marlene Mumukunde, Georgette Munisiro. Grace Kelly Buvunyi, Romain de Kumusima, Menelas Mheshimana, Lamek Maketo Nyabuga, Hawa Ie Obaje. Chinelo Grace Okengu Chinonso Emmanuel Okore Salome Alice Sijinyi Henry Canoro Sabinessa Junius Mabo Schali 
Amabile, Mimana. And Nick Gloria Wittonze. Lilian Natume Wampande. Denise Wanyana. University of Global Health Equity recognizes students who have achieved outstanding academic performance. We're here to celebrate our MGHD students who have earned the highest grade point averages of this cohort. The highest academic performance, the third place for the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery Program is presented to Gloria Itzihozo. Congratulations, Gloria. Gloria is passionate about health equity. When asked what she has learned from the MGHD, she said, witnessing this pandemic and the inequalities it has highlighted has made me more passionate about global health than ever. The MGHD has provided me the tools to take forward these lessons and apply them in my future career as a global health leader. Congratulations. The highest academic performance the second place for the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery is presented to Denise Wayana. Congratulations, Denise. Denise aims to apply her skills to become a global health leader. She told us, the UGHG MGHD program taught me technical skills that I can transfer directly into the workspace. As a global health leader, it showed me how invaluable it is to find the people that we want to serve where they live. The highest academic honor for the Master of Science in Global Health Delivery Program is presented to Shauna McKinnon. Apart from studying hard academically, Shauna deeply immerses herself in community work. She told us, the MGHD program at UGHE has been an invaluable learning experience. It has reinforced for me the importance of partnership with communities in decision making and has strengthened my resolve to pursue equity in everything I do. Congratulations, Shauna. Congratulations again to you, the lionesses and lion of the MGHD class 2020. Now, it's my great pleasure to introduce my dear friend, Dr. Paul Farmer. Of course, Paul needs no introductions but it's my pleasure to do so. Dr. Paul Farmer is a medical anthropologist and physician who has dedicated his life to improving healthcare for the world's poorest people. He is the co-founder and the chief strategist of Partner in Health, an international non-profit organization that since 1987 has provided direct health care services and undertake research and advocacy activities on behalf of those who are sick and living in poverty. Dr. Farmer and his colleague in the US and abroad have pioneered novel community-based treatment strategies that demonstrate the delivery of high quality health care in resource poor setting. Dr. Farmer holds an MD and PhD from Harvard University, where he is the Colocotron University Professor, the Chair of the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine at Harvard Medical School. He is also the Chief of the Division of Global Health Equity at Birgham and Women Hospital in Boston. Additionally, Dr. Farmer served as the United Nations Special Advisor to the Secretary General on Community-Based Medicine and Lesson from IT. Dr. Farmer has written intensively, extensively also, on health human rights and the consequences of social inequity. He is the recipient of numerous honors, including the Bronislaw Malinowski Award 
and the Margaret Mead Award from the American Anthropological Association, the Outstanding International Physician Award from the American Medical Association, a John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation Fellowship, and with his partner in health colleagues, the Hilton Humanitarian Prize. He is a member of the American Academy of Heart and Science and the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Science, from which he was awarded in 2018 Public Welfare Medal. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Paul. Congratulations to the class of 19. Now don't get uncomfortable, this is not last year's speech. You Lions of 2020 will no doubt be remembered as the class of COVID-19. This is a title you should wear proudly. The question that I will raise today is what will you do to become essential in the fight against this pathogen and other pathogenic forces. It will be my claim today that the best way for you to serve, dear Lions of 2020, will be to become or to resume being essential workers. Now, what do I mean by essential workers? I know you've all been reading what were once quaintly known as, as newspapers and which you now think of as the phone. There's a lot of disinformation in the media, including social media, but the truth about our current crisis can still be found by reading carefully, by attending to what's happening around you, and by thinking critically about some of the crises that we all face now together. So I'm sure that you've heard the term essential workers frontline workers, but what really constitutes the essential? What constitutes the frontline? These are people we and you should strive to be. And we also should strive to expand our notion of what and who, most importantly, is to be considered an essential worker on the front line. Without this, we will fail on our quest to deliver global health equity. That's your goal, Lions of 2020. And in confronting COVID-19 and other pathogens and pathogenic forces, there's much we can learn from all those who are already today fighting to serve as essential workers. Essential workers include Nurses and doctors, of course. Essential workers include vaccinologists and other researchers. Essential workers include public health officials. But essential workers also include, more visibly in these times of crisis, the people who plant our gardens and till them, the people who feed us, the people who have sustained you as you've studied on your beautiful mountaintop or here in this stunning city. The people who pave our roads and move us from one point to another. The people who keep us safe. The people who make things with their hands. Not only our phones, but our clothes and our clinics, our homes and our hospitals. In the United States, many of these essential workers have shouldered extraordinary burdens over the past few months. Many of them have fallen ill with COVID-19, in part because we treat too many workers as sacrificial lambs. And too many of the stricken have perished, not because we have in the United States too little stuff or too few medical staff or safe spaces, but because we lack systems or because more importantly, the system itself is unfair and has been since the founding 
of our republic. It's true that the Republic of Rwanda has done a far better job without all the staff and stuff and space we take for granted in the United States. Yes, we've done better here in Rwanda in part because of better systems. But, dear lions, we can still do better. I could give an entire graduation speech about disparities of risk for infection with a newly described pathogen and disparities of risk for poor outcomes once infected. In fact, I have given many graduation speeches about just this topic. These aren't cheerful or celebratory comments and seldom draw much in the way of applause. So I will skip that, knowing that no one graduates from UGHE without contemplating and studying the disproportionate risk faced by some, risk from which others are spared. Remember, it's not that essential workers are all brave because they must face undue risks, although many are called to do so. Firefighters know they must go towards the fire. But what is truly essential is that we acknowledge that many essential workers bear burdens that are anything but essential. High risk, poor pay, and worst of all, a lack of acknowledgement. So let's stop for a second and think of our own friends and colleagues, drivers, nursing assistants, cooks, community health workers, EMTs, you know the list. Let me continue by reflecting on two related challenges from two great leaders. Let me pause to acknowledge the passing of Congressman John Lewis, who I was lucky enough to meet more than once. When he was only 19 or so, he embarked on a mission of global health equity. You may know the story, but imagine a society in which he, a young theology student from Alabama, could not sit down at the same table or in the same train car as a white peer. What he felt called to do, his way of doing global health equity, was to make good trouble. Making good trouble led John Lewis to protest not only racial injustice, but every form of injustice. He often fought for proper recognition and acknowledgement of essential workers. This is what he called good trouble. He suffered for it, but it's why he was and is and will be celebrated for a long time to come. Now let us think of our own work here in Rwanda and elsewhere. Work for global health equity as a concept and of course in practice, because we know that you're all about the implementation. How do we make good trouble in our own work? Last week, I was in Butaro with UGHE board member Dr. Sunait Fasea and her family. But then, you know that. Because those of you who were on campus came out to give us the most awesome wave. So let me give that back to you. Thank you, Butaro campus. Of course, I teared up a bit looking across the mountain at you so far away, but these were tears of pride and joy. I was even more proud of the work done by our colleagues in the cancer program. Now think, who beyond family are the most essential workers in caring for children and adults with cancer in the midst of a pandemic? stop and think about it. In the midst of a shutdown, at a time when we're called to practice social distancing, when all across the world economies are shut down, who took care of those patients? Were they simply forgotten, abandoned? No, they were not. Many of you know the people who run that hospital and its programs. One of them is an administrator named Godfrey. I've known Godfrey for some years and was asking him, along with my colleagues, 
how are things going for patients from far away? And he told me that whether patients were from Rwanda, as most of them are, or from Burundi, or the DRC, or Uganda, the team there made every effort to find them, to get them their medications, or to bring them close for care. This is a classic example of making good trouble. And without that huge collective of individuals who we are here to describing as essential workers, many people would have lost their lives, not by dying of COVID, but by dying because of it. Yes, that is heroic work, but isn't that also good trouble? Doesn't global health equity require the managers, the logisticians, the drivers, the people who prepare the medications and chemo, in addition to those who administer that treatment, we all know that global health equity requires a vast army of essential workers. And that, I hope, is your goal as you graduate today, to join or rejoin that army of essential workers. Let me close by citing another leader who, like John Lewis, has made much good trouble in the course of recent decades. Last week, the president of Rwanda convened a cabinet meeting, and Dr. Sinait and I were invited. It was a private, closed cabinet session, so of course, I asked permission if I could paraphrase him here today. He might have gathered his team together and his guests and friends to reflect on the success that Rwanda has had in responding to COVID. But that was not his intention, nor was it his message. You know that I live between two nations and am proud to be both an American and a Rwandan. Proud and grateful to have been born and raised in the United States of America. But as my two countries have had a different approach to reconciliation, so too have they had a very different approach to the current crisis caused by a novel coronavirus. I won't go over the grim details, but last month in the United States, we had close to 2 million new cases and many, many deaths. I have lost friends and family to COVID. We can only pray the worst is over, but it doesn't look that way. In order to stem the tide there and elsewhere, we will have to make more good trouble. Now, Rwanda has had a very different experience so far, and you are no doubt proud. But His Excellency did not call us together to praise either the cabinet or his guests. Instead, he challenged us to do better, drawing special attention to the need to improve hospital services. This requires, of course, all of the essential workers that make a hospital work effectively and safely. Let me echo him here, since we took that message to heart. So yes, continue to focus on equity. And of course, that, by definition, requires humility. Equity within your own institutions and between them, within a nation and between nations. This work requires, again, a huge army of essential workers. So let's join that army as proud graduates of UGHE. We're with you, Lions, class of 2020, class of COVID-19, and we love you and are so proud of you. Congratulations to you and to your families. And now, dear Lions, you see this smile creeping over my face? I know there's someone who you've been waiting for and I get to introduce him. Not only a great friend, but a great teacher. I've already quoted his remarks in my speech, and it's hard not to smile when I think about the line, and now a man who needs no introduction in Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, children, kin, 
proud graduates, I give you His Excellency, Paul Kagame. Dear graduates, faculty, and staff, it would have been wonderful to be with you today at your beautiful campus in Utaro. However, joining you virtually does not in any way diminish how pleased I am to celebrate the achievements of the class of 2020. I'm happy that you were able to remain on campus to complete your studies safely and without interruption. The COVID-19 pandemic is certainly one of the greatest global challenges in recent memory. You have been trained to grapple with exactly this kind of problem. You can all go forth with the confidence that what you have learned at this university is highly relevant. Rwanda is doing its best to address the pandemic by drawing on our past experience and also following what the science tells us. The modest progress we have made in building a national health system is serving us well in managing COVID. Our country has also been fortunate to have good collaborators like partners in health. Together, we have pioneered new ways to improve the health and well-being of Rwandans. Most importantly, the trust that Rwandans have built among themselves and with the government multiplies the impact of our efforts. The University of Global Health Equity represents this way of thinking. You are an important part of our region's aspirations for improved health care and better research capacity. I'm thankful to those who have invested in the mission of this university, especially the Bill and the Melinda Gates Foundation, the Cummings Foundation, and the excellent university partners. And it goes without saying that we owe a special debt of gratitude to the Chancellor of UGHE, Dr. Paul Farmer, who has brought so many of us together over the years to deliver on a common vision. Dear graduates, your presence studying here and engaging with the community around you has enriched all of our lives. For the international students who wish to stay in our country, you are most welcome. It is our hope that all of you will find ways to share lessons from Rwanda with the region and the world. I'm excited to see where your careers take you. I trust that you lead, inspire, and innovate where you are needed most. We are behind you. Thank you. I would like to extend special thanks to our guest of honor, His Excellency, the, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, for his wonderful remarks. Congratulations once again, and to the class of MGHD 2020, you have demonstrated a strong ability to overcome challenges by completing this rigorous program during these challenging times of the COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of those present, the administration of UGHE, but most importantly, the communities you will serve. I urge you to use the knowledge and skills you have acquired throughout the program to respond to the pressing global challenges of our time and to reduce inequities in health delivery that still exist today. I would like to express my gratitude to all that, that have been with us especially to our guest of honor, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, Honorable Minister of Education, Honorable Minister of Health, our keynote speaker, Professor Senait Fiseha, UGHE Chancellor and Vice-Chancellors, 
distinguished guests, parents, friends, and family of UGHE who are tuning in from across the world for being with us throughout this ceremony. Congratulations one, once again to the 2020 Master of Science in Global Health Delivery Class of 2020. This brings us to the close of our fourth MGHD commencement ceremony. I wish you all a wonderful rest of the day.